loves lilies. And I found out you don't plant them on top of a hill. You don't plant them out in direct sunlight. You gotta have them in the valley. You gotta have them down there where that rich soil grows. Yep. They really sprout and they really shine and they really flower. So when you're going through the valleys, the dark times in your life, look over there and maybe the Lord will bless you to see a lily. Jesus is the lily of the valley. Yeah. That says, what it is, is he will never, never leave you nor yet forsake you here. I just want you to think about that. When he's the yeah. leader of the valley in my life, all glory goes to him. Yes. He's so good to look at. He's lifting yeah. me up. Yeah. When I'm down in my house and I can't see no other I can look over there and there's Jesus right beside me. He never leaves me. Hey, man. Let's sing <laughs> Trust in yes. <clears throat> One thirty seven.
I tried to climb it, but it seemed I surely fall. So I knelt and called on Jesus, and just as always I felt His presence, His hand of mercy. So many times His love and mercy has rescued me. So once again I come before Him. One more time I'll stand and praise Him for all His blessings. Yes, He's been so good to me. thank him for a while we'll get to praising him yeah right. we'll just take out time to thank him enough and put praise in our heart yeah. and it pleases the Lord yeah. right. that pleases the Lord turn right. your Bibles to Romans chapter 14 Romans chapter number 14 for our scripture reading if you're visiting we're so glad you're here in the house of the Lord yeah. Glad to see everybody here today. Kind of raining, some folks didn't come. I told them we got here some of the good Methodists don't come days like today. Ready they get sprinkled. Glad to have the Baptists here. You gonna tell them I said that answer, I don't mind. All right, Romans, Romans chapter number 14. I'm going to start reading with verse number 7. The Bible said, For none of us liveth to himself, no man die to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. For to this sin Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set it not thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. Amen. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, Every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. 
My text verse of the thought will be back in verse number 8. We don't find this word whether a whole lot of times in the Bible, but we find it three times in that one verse. Let me read verse 7 too. For none of us live to himself, and no man die to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord's. Yes. Now, if the Lord left me for a few minutes today, I ought to preach on a strange subject. I ought to preach on whether you want to or not. Whether you want to or not. There are some things in life we're going to do whether we want to or not. Now, let me say this. This is a book of whosoever will. Yes, sir. We know that. Go to church all the time. Whosoever will to the sinner, whosoever will let him come. And I want to say a word to the sinner if you're here today without God. God gave everybody a will. Yes, sir. A choice, in other words. And the Bible said, come now... And let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they'll be white as snow. So you can come and reason, or you don't have to come and reason. It's left up to you. Bible said, uh, Now I say, come now. No, I didn't miss that verse. Isaiah 55. Oh, everyone that thirsts, come to the waters and drink. He that had no money, come without money, without pride. You can come and drink from that fountain, or you don't have to. You have a choice. God gave everybody a choice. And then let me say this. After we get saved, we still have a will. We have a choice after we get saved. The Bible said, if you be willing... And obedient, you can eat the good of the land. Well, we can be willing and obedient and eat the good of the land. Well, we don't have to. We can refuse and rebel, the next verse says. So we got a choice. The Bible said, what know you not? Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have in you. You're not your own. You're bought with a pride. Therefore... Glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. We live dedicated to God, live close to God, glorify God in our body and our spirit, or we don't have to. But I'll tell you, there'll be some consequence if you don't. But you still have a chance. And I feel like that line's pretty long. Let me say that again. I feel like that line of them that don't want to glorify God in their body is a long line. But you do have a choice. We all have a choice. But then things I'm going to preach about today, nobody has a choice of this. Some things we're going to do whether we want to or not. First thing, let me mention, we're going to have trouble in this life, whether we want to or not. Job said, man that is born to the woman is few days and F-U-L-L. Full of trouble. Not just a little bit of trouble. But this life is filled with trouble. Who in the world wants to have trouble? No. Nobody wants to have trouble. Right. We're going to have trouble anyway. The Bible said many are the affliction of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them out of them all. Amen. And uh, Jesus told the disciples, let not your heart be troubled. But he knew they would. And he said, you now therefore have sorrow. But he said, I'll see you again. Your heart will rejoice. And your joy no man taketh from you. Amen. But in this life and while we're living here in this world, 
we're going to be faced with trouble. Exactly. We're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. We're persecuted, but not forsaken. We're cast down, but not destroyed. Thank God. Yes. We're going to come out victorious in the end. Oh, yeah. When I think about having trouble, I thought about Joseph in the Old Testament. One of the, one of the cleanest characters probably in the Old Testament was Joseph. His father loved him, made him a coat of many colors, and his brethren hated him. So they stripped him of his coat of many colors and throwed him in a pit and sold him as a slave and Potiphar's wife lied on him and they put him in prison and looked like he's almost to the end of the journey. Joseph, as great a man as he was, his life was filled with trouble. And why do we think we're not going to have trouble? Come on now. You're right. We're going to have trouble. Sure as we're here. Daniel, all the fault they could find in him is the way he prayed to his God. What happened to him? They cast him into den of lions. Yeah. You're going to have trouble, and I'm going to have trouble. Yeah. Oh, God, help us today to see that. The Bible said, The Lord God of Jacob is our refuge and a very present help in time of trouble. In the midst of that trouble, we got somebody with us all the way. Yes. What about Job? Oh, oh, listen to me. Uh, this is not what his wife said or his children said or his best friend said. This is what God said about Job. The Lord said, if you considered my servant Job, there's none like him in the earth. A perfect, upright man, one that fears God and shuns evil. Joseph lost, uh, Job lost everything he had. His children, his goods, and his everything he had. Uh, but he said, uh, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Job's life was full of trouble. And so we're going to have trouble whether we want to or not. Then I'm going to say, You're right. number two, we're going to have persecutions whether we want to or not. Yes, sir. Amen. So I'm not, I don't think I'll have no persecutions. You don't have to. You don't have to look for them. They'll find you. The Bible said, "Yea, and all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution." Yes. The reason we don't suffer no more persecution, we're not living too godly in these last days. I'm afraid. Amen. And uh, Jesus said, "If you were of the world, the world would love its own." Because I've chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. The world hates real Christians. Yes, sir. You say, I don't believe that. Well, you just hang around. You'll find out. If you live for God, yeah. you don't have to do nothing special. Just live for God. Yeah. <laughs> say no to the world and yes to Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Stay out of the world and... Stay in church. Persecutions will find you. If any man suffers a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. The early church had persecutions. And the Bible said there's a great persecution against the church in Acts. And there's a great persecution today against them that want to live for God. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fire trial, which is a trial, you so some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice inasmuch as you're partakers of Christ's suffering. Amen. Blessed are you when men shall revile you, persecute you, say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. He said, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great shall reward in heaven. That's easy to preach, but it's pretty hard to put a shoe in. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad when the persecutions come. What about the uh, what about the Hebrew children? They they was just living for God, loving God, standing up for God, and 
wouldn't bow down to the idol God, and they got them, cast them in the fire furnace. But thank God, they wouldn't bend, they wouldn't bow, they didn't back out, and they wouldn't burn. There's going to be persecution. But I want to say again, we're going to come out on top. Yes, yes. You hear me? Yes. We're going to come out on top in the end, amen. Yes, there's going to be trouble down here. There's going to be persecutions down here. Thank God one day after a while it's all going to end. Yep. And we're going to land on heaven's bright shore. Amen. But I want to say to you today, whether you want to or not, you're going to reap what you saw. Mm-hmm. But I said, I'm not going to listen to some preacher tell me what to do. You don't have to. I'm not preaching about that. You don't have to listen to me. You don't have to pay me a bit of attention if you don't want to. You don't have a choice about that. But you're going to reap what you sow. Whether you want to or not, don't matter You're going to reap what you sow. We'd come out, people come out a lot better if they'd be careful what they sow. The Bible said, Be not deceived, God's not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. He that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. If you don't sow to the flesh, you won't have to reap corruption. If you sow to the flesh, you will. And, uh, Bible said, uh, uh, He that soweth boundlessly shall reap boundlessly. But he that soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. Amen. We'll wish we'd have sowed sparingly when we start reaping. Mm-hmm. We're going to reap what was sowed. Everybody in this building, everybody's not in this building. Everybody's going to reap what they sow. We don't want to do that sometimes. It don't matter what we want to or not. But what, what some church members do, and I'm not being judgmental, I'm just telling you facts. But what some church members do, they sow to the flesh six days a week and then come to church on Sunday and hope for a crop failure. Yeah, come on. Exactly. But it doesn't work that way. You sow the flesh. You sow the flesh. You sow the flesh. Amen. That's what you're going to reap. Yep. If you sow the Spirit, you'll all the Spirit reap life everlasting. The times come, judgment must begin the house of God. Oh, God help us today. Jose, I believe it is, said, we've sowed to the wind and we're reaping the whirlwind. Yep. So, uh, it's time to seek the Lord to the come rain rice. Right Let me just stop here. I'm going to stop, but uh, take time here to tell you there's a, uh, there's a law of sowing and reaping in the Old Testament. Well, it's just a nature too, I guess would be the word. But we find it a lot in the Old Testament. The law of sowing and reaping. Three things I want to say about that. You reap what you sow. You don't sow one thing and reap another. You don't sow beans and reap corn. No. No. Reap what you sow. That's the law of sowing. Right. You reap exactly. You don't sow wild oats. Then come to church, try to reap wheat. Right. Some tries that, I think, but it don't work. You, you reap what you sow. That's the law of sowing. Yes, and then you reap after you sow. Yeah. Who ever heard tell of reaping anything before you sow it? You gotta sow it first. Yes, you gotta plant it first. Hey. You ain't gonna reap something somebody else has done. No. We get that all tangled up sometimes. Right. I'm gonna reap what I sow, and you're gonna reap what you sow. Hey, right. You all sow and reap. Yeah. Reap what you sow, reap after you sow. Now listen to this. You reap more than you sow. Yeah. Don't you ever forget that? Yeah. You can take a handful of shell corn. And plant over in your garden or in the field summer. If it's a good crop here and things go well, you reap 
few bushel off of that yes, little handful. Yes, sir. You can take a handful of beans and plant them out there in your garden. And you'll, re you'll reap a few bushel of beans yeah. off of that little handful. I wish we could see that. I wish the Lord opened our eyes and oh, yeah. let us see that you're going to reap so much more than you sow. Yeah. Oh, God, have mercy on it. Sure as we're in this building, whether we want to or not, we'll reap what we sow. If you done sowed some things in the past, you can't go by and you can't go back and change it. But you sure can help about sowing from here on out. And, uh, We've got to reap what we sow. Then I'll say next of all, you're going to bow one day after a while whether you want to or not. This proud crowd. Let me, let me, let me look right here at this verse. Everybody's going to bow. Verse 11. For it is written. Where is it written? Isaiah 45. It's done written in the Old Testament. Yes. Read again here in the New Testament. It's written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Every knee is going to bow. Right. This, uh, I said this proud crowd, this, the ones that think, I know in our church, I think that, uh, at least I think here we don't have too much a problem with this point right here. But I tell you that a lot of people have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. They're so high-minded and proud-hearted. Yeah. We're living in a proud-hearted world today. Yes, sir. But I'll tell you everybody, there's coming today, every knee's going to bow, every tongue's going to confess. Amen. Amen. And... Uh, the Bible said there's six things the Lord hates, yea, some's abomination. And the first thing's a proud look. Yeah. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Why do you say it not your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. We may give an account of the thing done in this body, according to that which done, whether it be good or bad. Did you know the Bible said God is angry with the wicked? Every day. Right. Every day God's anger of the wicked every day. Oh, what a sad verse in the Bible. But it's true. Yes. Yes. And it said one time at one place, uh, Acts, I believe it is, the times of this ignorance God weeped at. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Right. You might not ever repent here. Well, a lot of people won't. Not an ever bow, bow knee here. A lot of people won't. But there's coming today that every knee's going to bow. And every tongue's going to confess. Whether they want to or not. The Bible said, Wherefore God's also highly exalted him. So we've got you. Give him a name which is above every name. That the name of Jesus every knee should bow. And every tongue shall confess. That Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So we might not bow, not might not uh, humble down here, but there's coming the day. There's coming the day. It seems a lot of people seem like they're proud of the sin they're living in today. You watch TV and the news and things like that, and seem like they just well they do exalt sin. No question about that. And uh, things like that, they seem like they're kind of proud of it. There's coming day, not going to be proud of it. Right. Right. All them crooks is going to bow knee one day after a while. Yeah. Sure as we're in this building. Then I want to say, next of all, whether we want to or not, we're going to have to die. Yes. It's appointed. The Bible says appointed unto man wants to die. There's appointment. We all have appointment with death. And we're going to meet that appointment one day after a while. It, it no matter who it is, no matter how much money they have or where they live or what uh, kind of standing they have in this world, 
the poor and the ragged and the beggar. Everybody's going to die. Amen. It's a point of everybody. The Bible said in Adam all die. Yes, sir. Even so in Christ shall all be made alive. The wages of sin is death. Death's coming to the young and the old and the, and the good and the bad and the saved, unsaved, everybody. Appointment everybody has to meet one day after a while. The Bible said that Adam lived to be a hundred and thirty year old, first man, and he died. Noah lived to be a nine hundred and fifty year old, and the Bible said he died. Methuselah, the oldest man we're having a record of, lived to be nine hundred and sixty nine year old, and the Bible said he died. You read over in Genesis, read about the genealogy and things like that, and they died. And they died. And they died. It's a point that a man wants to die. And whether well, people want to or not, going to die one day after. Right. going to die. Amen. I hope you're ready. I hope you're prepared for that day. Yes, sir. But we're going to die. How we die is the important thing. Yes, sir. Some are dying saved. Please don't die that way. Some are dying faithful. I wouldn't want to die like that. Some are dying fruitful. But thank God there'll be a few that'll die unafraid and unashamed. I'd like to die like that. Unafraid. unashamed. So we're going to die. We're going to die. So the important thing, be ready when that hour come. Then the Bible said after death, the judgment. Whether we want to or not, we're going to stand the judgment. Yes, sir. The Bible said, I'll tell you in that day, a man will give an account of every idle word that they speak. What about that? Yes. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Nothing covered that will not be revealed. Nothing Hidden the claws and not be proclaimed on the housetop. And, and so judgment day is coming. Right. We must stand there. God will bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be bad. I'm going to close the last thing. I don't like to talk about this, but I've got to tell you the truth. Let's talk about it right here in a minute. And if you don't get saved, if you're here not saved, if you have a here not saved, if you don't get saved, you'll have to go to hell when this short life's over. I started to say whether you want to or not, nobody wants to go there. But we're living in a world today, and you know, on TV and things like that, they make jokes. They make on them, uh, on them, uh, uh, what, what, what do you call them? In shows on TV. Yeah, yeah, most of them. Most of them they do. But they make jokes about people going to hell. What are you going to do? What are you going to carry with you? Who you are? What are you going to do when you get down there? Crazy things like that. It ain't nothing to joke about. It ain't, it ain't nothing to joke about. I'll tell you, people don't get saved, you're going to have to go to hell. The right. Bible said that hell has uh, enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. The wicked have eternal hell all the nation be at God. We'll be a white throne judgment over in Revelation uh, 20. I don't have time to talk about that. But if, whosoever name not found written in the book of life, the Bible said was cast into the lake of fire. Amen. How awful, how awful, how awful. It's a real place and real people's going there. Yes, sir. And uh, some of these things the preached about today we're going to have to do whether we want to or not. Whether we want to or not. We don't have a choice. We're going to do it. Father in heaven, I want to thank you for the privilege we had to be here today and sing, pray, and preach a little bit. And I pray the Holy Spirit will work in some heart and life today. If some here is not really fully dedicated to God and, and uh, doing their best to live for Jesus and clean and separate from this old world, and uh, faithful with the church and all this stuff. And they need to pray about it. They need to get close to God. If somebody here never, never been born again, and don't know what it is to be saved, have that peace of God. I pray you'll deal with their heart. Help them to see they need the Lord. They need to come and to get their heart right with God today and get ready to go to heaven with us in this short life. So 
I thank you for everyone made the way of the house of the Lord. I just pray you bless every member of this church, every best, everybody together. We certainly need God these days. Bless our sick, bless our weak, bless those, Lord, that's not able to be in church. And help us, Lord, that we just love and uh, the Lord, love people. And to keep on keeping on for Jesus till the Lord comes back again. I don't feel like it'll be long. We'll thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I believe we'll sing a couple of verses of the song. And, uh,